Hi friends! It's wonderful to come to you again here on YouTube and to have you come and join me again. For those of you who haven't uh, met me before, my name is Pastor Ruth. I'm the pastor of the Longmeadow Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Auburn, New Hampshire. And I come here to YouTube every Wednesday with a special message for the children of our church. I'm also here every Sunday with a special message of worship for our entire church family that includes prayer and reading scripture and talking and reflecting on that scripture. And it is wonderful to have you join me here today. I feel very blessed that you take your time to come here and share this time with me. Now today, the day that I am releasing this uh, video on YouTube is Wednesday, January 6th. Now I come here every Wednesday, but this Wednesday in particular is a special day in the church. It's a day that we call Epiphany. Can you say that with me? Epiphany. Epiphany. Epiphany is a word that means reveal, come to understand, like if you were trying to learn how to do math and you had a a hard um, addition problem, like you were trying to add up a whole bunch of numbers and you weren't really understanding it and then suddenly it clicked and you got it and you understood how to do it. That's an epiphany when we suddenly understand because something was revealed to us. And the reason we call this day epiphany is because there were some very wise people long time ago who were searching for the Messiah, for the Savior. They had seen a star and they had heard that this star would lead them to something important. In fact, it would lead them to the Messiah, the Savior but they weren't exactly sure how to do it. Now, you've probably heard this story before. We often tell it at Christmas time, but it actually occurred sometime after Christmas. We're not sure exactly how long after Christmas, but it was after Jesus was born. Now, these wise ones had seen a star in the sky that was brighter and different than any they had ever seen. And so they talked about it with other people and they read about it in, in their holy books and they prayed about it and they realized that this star was going to lead them to the Savior, but they weren't exactly sure how. I mean, if you've ever tried to follow a star, it's a little bit hard. So they did the best they could and they went on their journey, but they also decided that they were going to ask questions along the way, sort of ask for directions on their way. Well, they came to a place called Judea, and they decided to go to the king, because they figured, well, if anybody knows about this, the king is going to know about it. And so they went to the king, and his name was Herod, and they said, we are searching for this, the Messiah, the one who is called the Savior or the King of the Jews. And Herod, well, he didn't really like hearing that because the last time he checked, he thought he was the king and he didn't like hearing about somebody else being the king. And so they said, well, what are you, what are you talking about? And they said, well, we have seen his star and we have been following it. And we were told that they would that if we follow the star, we would find the Messiah, the Savior. So he said, well, hold on a second. Let me check with my wise ones, my smart people. So he spoke to scholars and wise people in his kingdom and said, what have you heard about this Messiah? Where is he supposed to be born? Have you heard of him? And they said, well, yeah, actually we have. It's, it's in our Bible. It says that the Messiah was, would be born in the city of David, which is called Bethlehem. You've heard of Bethlehem. And he thought, well, that little town, are you sure? And they said, yep, that's where he's supposed to be born. And so 
Herod went back to the wise ones who came to him and had been following the star and said, well, I talked to my people and they say that the Messiah is supposed to be born in Bethlehem. So why don't you go find him? And when you found him, you come back here to me and tell me where he is, okay? And they're like, oh, all right. And so they decided to leave, but they said, you know, I don't think this king is up to any good. I think we will go find him. We'll take the information because all information is good. But I don't think we're going to go back to him. So they did follow his information. They went to Bethlehem. They continued to follow the star, stopped in Bethlehem. And there they found the Messiah. They found the baby Jesus and they gave him gifts. And that's the story of Epiphany, that the star revealed, showed them the way to get to Jesus. Now, if you or I are going on a journey, we don't usually follow a star. We usually follow some other kind of information that helps us to find things. One th way we can do is to follow a map. Like I have here, this is a map of New Hampshire, which is the state I live in and the state that many of you live in. And this helps me to understand kind of the big picture. It helps me, I can find where I live, which is way down here, and maybe I want to go up north. Maybe I want to go up to the mountains and I want to go north. I go, okay, well there's this really big road that leads up there. So if I keep going north on this road, I'm going to be going in the right direction and eventually I'm going to want to turn left and it's going to bring me out. And that's that's a one good way. Another good way that we often find that we often use to find our way is GPS. And I use it here on my phone because it helps me to find it. Now, this kind of gives me the big picture and this gives me kind of the details. And I like using both of them. I like having a good general picture, but when I'm driving in my car and I'm the person behind the wheel driving, I want to always be safe. And to be looking at a map all the time and taking my eyes off the road and looking at a map isn't always safe. So I like using the GPS too because it talks to me. It actually will tell me in one mile, take exit whatever and go and turn left and so I'm like okay you know it reminded me now's the time to be looking for the exit and so I can keep my eyes on the road and it's going to let me know when to turn and I like having that because all information is good all things that direct me in the right direction are good and I'm going to listen to all of them well now right now there's no star in the sky that's pointing the way to Bethlehem for us to find Jesus. But if we want to find Jesus, we have a number of ways that are going to help point us, give us the information that we need to help us find Jesus. Because you know what? We don't even need to go to Bethlehem anymore. We can find Jesus right here, right in our own hearts. Because that's where Jesus lives in our hearts and Jesus is just waiting for you to talk to him and to ask him how can I find you how can I know what you want of me in my life a couple ways that we can do that the first way best way I always think is to pray is to find a quiet place and maybe we can find somebody to pray with us a family member, your mom, your dad, your grandparents, maybe your brothers and sisters, and you can pray together and say, Jesus, help me find you. Help me find what you want in my life. Thank you for everything you've done for me. Help me to know you better. Another way that we can find Jesus is by reading the Bible. Now, this is an old Bible that I have at my house, and I don't use it very much because you can see it's kind of falling apart. This is a very old Bible, but I've got it marked, and people before who've owned this before me have marked it. 
and so it's kind of special to me so I do still use it because inside are the important words don't I don't worry about the cover so much as I worry about the inside now for me the Bible is sort of like the map it gives me the stories it helps me to understand kind of the big picture but when I pray it's sort of like my GPS it gives me the specifics about me the Bible tells me the stories of God with all of humankind but my prayer tells me about Jesus' relationship with me personally. And I'm, I'm willing, I'm happy, I'm thrilled to take information any way that I can so that I can see Jesus in my life and hear how Jesus wants to lead me. But you know, there's even another way that I can find Jesus. I can find Jesus in you. Whenever I see you, and I see you learning, uh, and I see you wanting to know Jesus, I see you praying, I see the good and kind and loving things that you do, I see Jesus because I know that he lives in you, and I can see him in you, and that helps me find him in me. Will you pray with me now? Lord, we thank you for being in our lives, being in our hearts, and always willing and eager to listen to us. Help us to find our way to you so that we can lead others to you. Amen. I thank you for joining me here today. I, help you, I thank you for always helping me to find Jesus when I need him most that I can find him in my heart because I know that you are praying for me just like I am praying for you. I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope this is a good week for you when you're starting back to school, some of you, or you're starting back to preschool or whatever you do during the week. And we're starting back in a new year. This is going to be a great year, my friends, because we are going to go through it together. I miss seeing you very much. I love you very much. But even more important than that, God loves you so much and wants to talk to you every single day. Until I come back here again, I hope you have a great week. Always keep praying and remember how much we love you. Take care. Bye-bye.